understand what is cracking, it is your girl, Lillian Francis. This is a three-part series in which we are going to be looking more into our new MIDI tools in Live 12. And today we're going to be looking into our MIDI transformation tools. There are so many different ways now we have of creating new chord progressions and sequences and coming up with things that we never would have come up with otherwise. Let us dive right in. <gasps> Splash! All right, fam, welcome to Live 12. This is it. This is what we look like. Beautiful new interface. Uh, we're going to dive right into our MIDI clip. So what we're going to do is we have a MIDI track here with a little instrument on it. And I'm just going to create a new MIDI clip to house our new MIDI note. So shift command M. So this is what our clip view now looks like. It's kind of same, same, but different. And one of the big differences is we have these three little sections up here. We have our pitch and time utilities. We have our transformation tools and we have our generative tools here. Today, we're going to be looking into our transformation tools. So you're going to see on this drop-down menu, we have eight different transformation tools. Arpeggiate, connect, ornament, quantize, recombine, span, strum, and time warp. Let us start with arpeggiate. This is probably ones I'm most excited about because I love using Ableton's arpeggiate MIDI device, and this just makes it way more visual and intuitive. So let's go ahead and create a little bit of chord progression here. So if you've ever played with the arpeggiate MIDI device, this is going to be very similar. You have your styles, your steps, your distance, your rate, and your gate. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just change kind of anything here, and it's going to be reflected here in the MIDI. So let's go ahead and change the style and see how that changes it. So I'm going to switch it to up, and now we have this upward style arpeggiation. And right now this is moving at a rate of 1 24th, but I can go ahead and make it slower. Or faster and I'll keep it at maybe 1 12th for now and then you can change the steps which is essentially the number of transposed patterns you have notice that I add more here though none are being added and that's because my rate isn't small enough to be able to add more on top of them There we go. And then we also have distance, which is just kind of how the chord is stacking on top of itself. So in this case, we have a distance of seven scale degrees, which means that you have your original chord and then you have essentially that original chord stacked on top, uh, seven scale degrees on top. So it's going to start again with the one. And then we have gate here too, which is going to determine the length of our notes. Cool. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is connect. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just command Z until we get back to our original chord progression. And let's see what connect can do. So connect is going to fill in the gaps between successive notes and chords. Right now there are no gaps. So let's go ahead and make some. So I'm going to select all of my chords, command A, and I'm just going to hit shift and then press my left arrow a couple times to create space between our chords. All right, so our first little knob here is spread. And as we bring up spread, it's going to start adding notes and then shifting them up and down. The higher the spread is, the more pitch shifting that's going to be done to these connective notes and the smaller spread is the less pitch shifting so let's give it kind of a medium spread next thing we have here is density and that's how many connective notes we want so as we bring it down there's going to be less as we bring it up there's going to be more right now our rate set to grid let's actually make it maybe a smaller rate like a 30 second note so you can see that density goes down and then density as it goes up more get added <laughs> It's uh, it's there more as a creativity tool that I think like really uh, making great melodic music right now, but we love the idea. And then tie here is going to start connecting some of those notes to each other. So with tie at zero, they're kind of all going to be their own small little note. And then as we bring them together, the greater the likelihood that they're going to connect with the note next to them. So you can go ahead and play around with rate and density and spread, etc., to create some some weird stuff. <laughs> interesting. Anyways, let's move on to our next transform tool, which is ornament. What ornament does is it creates short little strikes at the very beginning of your MIDI notes to create these flam and grace note effects. So what a flam is, is a tiny little hit that happens right before our main hit. So it's really easy to add a tiny kind of little stutter steps right before the actual note itself. This is going to be really helpful too when it comes to programming drums, but let's look at it in a melodic context. So as we change this position, it is going to change the positioning of our flam. So whether it comes kind of before the note or if it pushes into the note and how big it is. 
There we go. And we can change the velocity of it too, depending on how loud we want the initial hit to be. Now, right now, if I move position, it's gonna change the selected flam. But just so you know, as soon as I unselect that and I change the position again, another flam is gonna be added. But anyways, that's flam. And then we have grace notes, which is kind of like flam, but we're just adding more notes to it. So you can either add notes that are a little bit higher, the same pitch, or lower pitch. You can change the positioning, right? So it's shorter, longer, weird stretch situation, change the velocity here, um, and then also the chance that you're gonna hear those notes. There we go. And a mountain is just gonna change how many grace notes you have at the beginning. So higher value, you're gonna have more. Cool, so that's ornament. Let's move on to quantize. Now quantize is just a quantization tool, but it's nice and visual. We can quantize quarter notes, 16th notes, eighth notes, 32nd notes, however you want it, triplets. Uh, you can change whether you want to adjust the start note, the end note, or both. And then you can set the amount and you can see it reflected as we are changing them. Not much more to say about this, y'all. All right, let's hop on down to recombine. So recombine is an interesting one. What it does is it essentially takes the pitch and length and velocity information of the notes that we currently have and apply them to a different note. So let's just look at pitch for now because I think that's the easiest one to kind of understand and visualize. So currently I have rotate on zero, but if I go ahead and click and drag to the left or to the right, you're gonna see that my notes just keep getting rearranged. So it's taking the notes that I already have, but putting them in a different chord stack essentially. So now I have that. And then if I move it, and then if I move it, and then if I move it, and then I can essentially keep moving between our different pitches and find lots of different combinations. And then length and velocity engage do a similar thing. If we engage length and we change this, they're gonna change the length, but none of our lengths are different. So we would have to have different length MIDI notes. And then when we move it, they all change to different lengths. And the same thing with velocity. So like if I randomize the velocity down here a little bit, and then I change the velocities, we would just get a different combination of velocities. So it would be useful for switching things up and inspiring uh, maybe new progressions that you hadn't necessarily thought of and just adding like a little bit of variation and randomization to things. All right, next up we have span. So span is gonna adjust the length of our notes based on whether it's in legato, tenuto, or staccato mode. In legato mode, it's gonna offset our notes so that the end of our note reaches the start of the next note. So right now we already have that, it's already in legato mode, but I can offset it so it goes past the start of the next note or I can bring it back so it falls behind and I have this variation knob which is going to slightly just change the end note timing which is just going to kind of humanize it a little bit next I have this tenuto option and I'll be honest guys I'm not sure what the difference between this and legato is they seem to do the exact same thing and then we have staccato here which is just making it staccato so it's cutting all the notes in half and then allows you to offset it this way so this would probably be a fun one to use if you want to just like either add a little bit of variation to the ending of your notes or if you want to slightly offset any of your lengths and our next one is strum this is one that I'm actually super stoked on I think I'll be using this all the time it essentially lets you strum your chords by moving the start and end points Woohoo! so you can kind of see what that looks like here or you can make them go from high to low yeah I know I'm always having to do this manually and it's so nice that I can just do this really fast now. And the last one we have is our time warp and this is kind of a wild one. So essentially it allows us to move around our notes and stretch them using this little graph here. Kind of weird. Very also similar to just selecting and moving warp markers around, but it's got kind of a fancy new interface and more possibilities. A cool use for this would probably be like hi-hats and making those sound kind of weird. Let's go ahead and just create a little quick beat. I have a drum rack right here. Let's create a new MIDI track, shift command M, and just do a really quick little kick snare kind of situation. We're just gonna draw all these hi-hats all the way across. So just like this, it would be kind of a little boring. So we can go ahead and select time warp here and then select HH baby steps and go ahead and start to kind of move things around and get some weird new patterns.
And we can go ahead and turn on quantize if we want them to actually like snap to the grid. And notice that every single time I move my numbers here, I'm getting a new hi-hat pattern. So there's so many ways to just make new patterns very quickly. Next, I have range here. If I turn range off, it's gonna change the length and number of hi-hats that I have. But if I keep it on fit, it's gonna always stay in the time that I have selected. It's gonna fit within the clip. And then when I have no end set to include, it essentially means that the length of the note is going to be changed depending on how fast I'm making the hi-hats. See how the, the end is changing? If I don't include it, the end does not change. It stays the same no matter what the speed is. Good music is all about movement over time, right? And time warp is one of those things that is going to make it really easy to create movement and create variation over time in our projects. All right, guys, so those are our new transformation tools in Ableton. I think they're gonna help us make a lot more kind of interesting music and stumble upon cool, creative uh, sequences that we wouldn't have necessarily stumbled upon otherwise. If y'all wanna learn about more other MIDI tools in Ableton 12, I also made a video on our pitch and time utilities as well as our generative MIDI tools. So go ahead and check those out if you wanna learn more. All right, guys, happy music producing. <laughs>